So as typical fashion, I'm late again with this month's uh, business update. Uh, I don't even know what day it is today. I think it's the 4th or the 5th. It's been, it's been a big month. It's been a big month in terms of ideas and getting things started. I haven't done much this month in terms of um, making ceramics. And as you can see, my shelf is quite bare. So I do have one batch that I'm going to put up for sale today. Um, but I'm not happy with the, some of the glaze. Um, I was trying to do a white glaze and it's gone into more of a creamy panna cotta and I know exactly what went wrong. Basically, um, when I did the test, I did it on a test tile which is quite small and on it, it looked nice. It had tin for the white and it had rutile for a bit of the warmth. But when it became a full thing, so when, especially on the inside because of it's quite a bit, you know, light don't hit the inside as much when you look at it, um, it tends to be a darker color on the inside than on the outside. So that yellow is kind of too much. Uh, so I still like the recipe, I just need to tone down the rutile which has got iron in it and that iron is what gives the warmth. Um, but just a little bit so that's why it's like a little bit warm but not brown like the other ones. But beside that, I don't have much to show, that's why I don't have my table set up today and I'm also a little bit lazy. So the main thing I want to get into today is just a follow up on the progress in terms of getting the um, share studio started. So I looked back at my highlights on Instagram in terms of like when the idea started and it was about the 1st of November. Uh, so within a month, basically I signed a lease on a commercial property. Uh, for those who are in Melbourne, it's on Sydney Road, Brunswick. So it's a good spot. It's actually going to be very close to where I'm moving into late next year. So it will be like a three, four minutes walk to work. And that's quite exciting. And the space itself is nice, but it's, it takes a little bit of work to get it to a point where it's going to be more presentable. So it used to be a wedding dress. I think it's a wedding dress or some sort of fashion designer shop. So the flooring's got final kind of dark maple color flooring and it's just not the most attractive so there's a lot of work i'm gonna have to do um i'm gonna like do a polished concrete i have to repaint the wall i have to take out a lot of the um existing partition walls uh, i'm taking out the drop ceiling so i can show the original um, tin press ceiling which is really nice uh, and that's probably also going to get painted i'm going to do like once i get the keys which will be on the 14th so about 10 days from now I'll get the keys and I'll be able to go in and do like a little walkthrough video and just show the progress because I I think that would be a really fun and interesting thing to do um, and just to look back on in the future just to see where it all started and how the space looked initially. Um, a lot of this is going to be DIY. Um, I'm just going to have to do as much as I can by myself, obviously minus the electrical work and the plumbing because that's in Australia, it's, it's illegal to do any electrical work, like we can't even unscrew a PowerPoint. It's kind of annoying, but um, it is what it is here. The space is like a long skinny shop. Um, it's only about six, maybe 5.5 .5 meters wide. And then it goes through for about 20, I think 23, 25 meters. And it's gonna be divided into three sections. So at the front, we're gonna have the gallery space, like I talked about last time and the retail space, which, you know, all the members and residents can show their work and sell it um, for commission to the studio. And then in the mid section is the shared studio area where we'll have about, I'm thinking six wheels. I want to push for eight, but it's, it's, it's going to depend on the space. So once I get the space cleared out, I will be able to get a better visualize. Like I've got floor plans drawn out, um, but it's hard to tell exactly how crammed it's going to feel. And I want it to be an enjoyable space. I want it to be, um, pleasant for the members and stuff and that they will want to spend time there even if it's fully packed it's not going to feel super cramped and I think that's a main thing like I can forego a little bit of profit if it means that people will enjoy the space more and come back and um, recommend other people basically um, and the, at the back will be the residence area which I'll have a spot as well and then I think for now there'll be two other spots for people who are uh, closer to a full-time maker, so they can rent out the space, they have access to the kiln, they can load their own stuff, they can set their own firing program and do all that. Um, so it's a really kind of independent space. Um, so it's semi-private. I don't know if I want to do full-on rooms yet, uh, just because it's gonna take up valuable space. And I, I want the space to feel a little bit more open, a little bit more like a community, 
Um, so maybe like kind of semi partition, maybe with like wall shelves like these. Um, so you can kind of see through it, but then it's you get a little bit of privacy. But that's going to depend on the people that come in. So I'm going to once the space is ready, I'm going to do like an open studio thing and have people come in, walk through it, see what they think, give me some feedback. And I guess people who are interested in the space can have a little bit more of a say in terms of how the space is going to be laid out and what works for them. For example, someone who's wheel throwing um, will have a different requirement than people who are hand building. Yeah, so I want to make it as flexible as possible. Um, and at the back, we have a carport, uh, which is massive. It's like five by five meters. So we're going to have the kilns there as well. Um, I'm thinking putting a little shed there for glazing. Um, I don't know yet. There's a room potentially inside that could work as a glazing room. It's, it's Currently it's a shower and bathroom. So there's two toilets and there's one shower. If I convert the shower and bathroom into a glazing room, that will work because it's got existing exhaust fans. So I just need to add in an intake to get fresh air in. And then maybe I'll put in an air purifier as well just to clean up the air. And then that can be the glaze mixing room. And for any like actual dipping, and you can just do that anywhere, and that's pretty safe. Um, yeah, so <laughs> uh, it's weird because it's it's happened so quickly from the inception of the idea and to doing inspection. And when I was doing inspection, I was just doing it as just to see what's out there. Initially, I thought it's something that I have to wait till early next year or like mid next year because the kilns are gonna be a bit slow to get here because everyone's buying kilns and a lot of like even local manufacturers are making them because they're fully booked. Um, so I did manage to find a second hand kiln that's 250 liters. Uh, so I'm going to be renting that for a while, which I think it's actually quite a good idea because you can rent a kiln for about $300 a month instead of paying $10,000, $12,000. So I'll rent that for a month. I'll use it, see how, how I like it. So it's it's an old kiln, but it's got new elements, it's got new multi swing controllers, it's got new uh, digital controller, and it's been checked. And these guys are great, like they're one of the best kiln makers in Australia. So I do trust them to refurbish it to a you know high standard. And if anything goes wrong, I can always get back to them. They're local in Melbourne, so they can come and do any services or maintenance or repairs. Um, so that's good. And I do also have a second kiln that I've placed an order for, which is a Rode 200 liters front loader. Um, that's coming from Germany, so that's gonna take a while to make and to travel. The current estimated is end of April, which means if I can get the studio started in end of January, I'll have a few months with just one kiln instead of two. So I might start with a lower capacity, I'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll start with one resident and two to three members. And if, the, if a single kiln can take care of that, then I might add a few more members and see how that goes. Um, it's a few months gap. And worst case scenario, I'll find someone else that I can rent a kiln from and then um, add that to the collection. I have my plans written out. I have all my kind of ideas in mind and I've like the mind maps drawn out. So I know like the rough brushstroke ideas, but a lot of the smaller details will need to be finessed as I go with the business. Basically, I want to be as agile as possible. For example, if no one wants to be in residence, then I might convert that into an other shared studio space. That way I can have maybe 10 to 12 wheels going at the same time. Um, and that will make up for the residence space. So maybe it becomes more of a community studio instead of a full-time making studio. So that's possible. Or if no one wants to be a member, but there's a lot of residents, I could do the same, but the opposite, um, which is less likely because I don't think the space suits it. There's, it's hard to explain, but once I do the walkthrough video, I'll be able to explain why I'm separating it the way that I am right now. When I decide to sign the lease or when I've decided to apply for the commercial space, my assumption was that it has single phase power, which is what the real estate told me. And I also didn't really look that closely because I just believed them. Because I'm like, why would you not advertise three phase if you've got it? Because that's a bonus for a lot of businesses. Um, and then when I did a final walkthrough just before signing a lease, I noticed that it's got three phase power, which is great because that's gonna save me so much money in, I will still have to do the wiring. So I'll still have to do the wiring for two to three three-phase cables to the back where the kilns are going to be because they're all going to be hard wire kilns. But the main cost was getting the council or getting the power distributor to install a three-phase um, connection, uh, which from my research would have been about $10,000 to maybe $15,000, depending on how difficult the installation is. And being on the main road, 
you, they're going to have to have traffic management and that's going to be extra cost. That's going to be more like road work kind of situation where people have to put coins down. There's going to have to be people monitoring the whole thing. So it's going to be, initially I was prepared to pay that and I was like, it is what it is. The space is great. It's suitable. The location's good. So if this is the one thing that's annoying, I'll just have to deal with it. Um, so finding out that it's got free face power was such a relief because now that frees up a lot of the budget to put into more of the fit out, um, to equipment and just to make the space even more enjoyable to work in because I'm going to be making in that space as well. I mean, I probably won't be doing that for the first few months because I'll be running the space. Um, I want to hire staff as soon as possible, but it's going to take time to train them and to get them to a level where I can just step back and let them deal with the store. I think retail is a bit easier because um, a lot of people have retail experience. There's nothing too different. I think the retail space can just be run as any other shop and that's fine. It's more the back end kind of thing. So a studio tech that can manage the workflow of firing and um, we have to work out a system, for example, like where, where should the things go if it's ready to be fired? Do we put a shelf near the kiln or do I put a shelf in the studio and everyone can just put their stuff on it and then just have the labels so I know which shelf is which and then when it's all fired, we'll weigh it and calculate the cost and all stuff like that. So it's it's little logistics stuff like that, which again, it's gonna be a evolving process. Um, I can imagine that I can try and plan as much as I can right now, but without actual real life um, experiments, it's hard to tell what works and what doesn't. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've spent the most of the month just thinking about stuff like that, writing things down. So I've built a website. Um, it's based on a Shopify platform um, and it works with the POS, so install point of sale system as well. So Shopify's got its own and I might do a little video on that. There are a little bit of limitation, but out of all the options I've seen, um, for me, it works the best, mostly because it syncs up perfectly. A lot of the other kind of third party point of sales, they work and they sync up, but because it's not native, there's always a risk of things going wrong and there's just little annoyance which I'll go into in a different video if I do decide to um, chat about the more point of sale and online platform system. Oh, also the name of the business is going to be called 1280, you know, just because 1280 is such a common temperature that we fire to. And I wanted like a more generic name. I wanted a name that didn't have too much meaning in it because I want the the studio and the environment and the community to bring a meaning to the name. So a more generic name like that, it's good and it's more agile that I can start sidestep and do other stuff with the same company name and it won't look out of place. Like if I make it into like blah, 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 collective ceramic studios, then it's like, but I also sell stuff and it's also, we want to start a gallery. We want to do stuff like that. Um, maybe do classes, then it's like, I just, yeah, and I like the generic name and it looks good on the website, it's simple. Um, I, we, the, the domain was easy to get. It's basically 1280.com.au, .gallery or .studio. So I bought all three um, just in case. And I think the main one that we'll use is 1280.gallery. So numbers and then .gallery. So that's also my Instagram handle for the studio. So if you want to check it out, do so. That's, not many posts, but you can see a floor plan on it that explains kind of in detail um, what the space is going to look like, where the things are going to go, etc, etc, etc. Yes, I just want to do an update mostly on that just because I haven't been doing anything else. Um, I'll put a shop update today. Um, there's only like 10 items, so it's not really a big deal. And like I said, I'm going to take a break from making for the next, I would say the next three months just to be safe. And as soon as I can, I'll start making again. And that's why for me, I almost want to have my setup at the f near the front of the store. That way I can throw on weekdays when it's quiet and I can still serve customers and do all that. And I can save a bit of money of hiring as retail staff um, for the quiet days because if I can take care of it and I won't be throwing like eight hours a day. I'll, usually the way I work is I throw in the morning and then the afternoon I do more kind of other business related stuff. So that will work out well. Um, if the store opens at 10 a.m., I come in at eight, do two hours, three hours of throwing. Um, and it might be nice to have a bit of like a demonstration as customers walk through just to show that. Cause the selling point for us is everything's made locally. It's literally made in the store. So I want to really emphasize that. I want people to see that 
it's not something that's imported, it's not something that's outsourced, it's literally our makers making our own thing and selling it. It's all direct to consumers and hopefully that will give more value into the product. Um, and pricing is going to be tricky because we're going to have people setting price for their own items. Um, I think there will be some sort of guidelines just to be like, this is the price points that we're going for. So, you know, try and not deviate too much from that. The last thing you want is members starting a price war <laughs> and everyone's, you know, undercutting each other. And I think that's, again, that's another thing that I have to think about in terms of a uh, community. You know, it's not, it's not rules. It's not, it's more just guideline and a kind of a shape of what sort of community we are trying to create and kind of get in people who have the same mindset and have a similar value that's aligned. Um, I think one thing that I really want to emphasize is that it's a community, it's a collective of makers and it's not a competition. Like even though we're all trying to sell ceramics, it doesn't mean that we're competing with each other, you know. Um, we can all do well at the same space, you know, just because someone else made a sale doesn't mean they took a sale away from you. And if the space becomes popular, and if some of our makers are doing better than the others, they will draw in more audience, and those audience could also overspill to the other makers. So I think it's like we're kind of on the same boat, and if the makers do well, the business do well. If the business do well, that means the makers are doing well. So it's kind of like an incentive for everyone to just do the best that they can and support each other basically and I really want that to be the main thing like obviously I want our members to make a living to be able to pursue their careers and that's what the space is about it's to lower the hurdle and take away all the logistics takes away, takes away all the requirement of buying a kiln buying wheels doing all that stuff um, you can just pay a fee per month come in and use the space however you like and just focus on the craft if you don't want to sell on your own channel that's fine you can have all your stuff through the retail and the online shop by 1280 and that's perfectly fine for some people they might do craft shows they might do exhibitions so they might make some stuff for themselves and they might make some stuff for the studio and again that's fine so it's not like 1280 would be exclusive thing where if you're a member you have to sell that no if you choose not to sell anything at all in store that's completely fine as well it's it's a bit of a complicated plan but Again, I've been getting a lot of good feedback from people. Basically, a lot of the community I've met on Instagram, I've been chatting to directly and I've been doing surveys and I've been collecting data and just see what people think. And I think I haven't heard any negative feedback, which is good. Um, there's a lot of ideas that came up in terms of how I can do things that are great. And yeah, there's already interest by a few people who look into getting a membership or being a resident and looking at pricing and stuff. I'm still trying to work out the pricing exactly. I think that's something that I can't do until I've in the space and I've kind of finishing, almost like done fitting out the space and making sure that I'm not overlooking any costs um, in terms of like monthly costs and bills and stuff like that. I need to make sure that the business is sustainable um, without charging people too much. Because I want, again, I want to make it as accessible as possible. And if it means that the rent is a little bit cheaper to get people in, but it allows them to pursue the career and to create work that people want, then by selling those work, we get the commission and you know we can make up the difference there. So the rent is there just to get like a little baseline just so that we can pay most of our bills. And hopefully the retail space do well enough that that's enough profit for you know hiring staff and all that stuff. Like I don't see this business as one that's gonna make a lot of money. But again, I also don't run I don't want to run it as a not for profit as well. It's it needs a bit of money, but not the extent that, you know, I can just go and buy a mansion and buy a yacht because of it. <laughs> it's more um the if we can make a decent amount of profit, then I can create more community focus events. So another thing I want to do is uh, kind of like an emerging artist competition. Uh, so I think it, it might be a yearly thing and I'll definitely not do one right away because I think the business, the studio needs a bit of a reputation first and also like a bit of a following, a little bit of audience to get entry. So the idea is that I'll do, once a year, I'll do a competition where any artists who have less than, I guess, five years experience can enter for free. Um, and the top six, maybe top four, top six, depending on the space, uh, will do a group exhibition at the end and also announce the winner on the exhibition opening night. 
and the winner would get a free membership for three months or six months. Um, again, details like that will tweak later on. But I just want to be able to give people who are talented who might not have the means to create their own studio um, and just to give them the resource to kind of cultivate that talent and cultivate that, you know, skill set. That's something I really want to. And yeah, so a lot of events like this, which does require a little bit of money to, I guess, sustain. So I guess that's where a lot of the profits going to come from. And once I can start making my own things and sell things from the alley, that will be, you know, so if I sell the alley stuff in 1280, obviously I wouldn't charge myself a commission. Like it's all under the same company anyway. Um, so that's also, I guess that's more the profit for myself to live on. And then 1280 is more money to spend back into the business itself, if that makes sense. So I won't be paying myself a salary out of 1280. I'll be paying myself a salary out of the sales I make in the alley. Just because they're, even though it's the same business in terms of legal structure, I still want a little bit of separation between the two. And yeah, I also want to make sure that it's not biased. Like obviously me operating both businesses, it, you know, I have to try my best to be subjective. Oh, no, sorry. I have to try my best to be objective and to make sure that there's no bias towards my own brand versus other people's and to make sure that everyone gets the same opportunity to sell as much as they can. So for example, the shell things might rotate every two months. That way everyone gets like the best spot, whichever that might be. Um, and we'll feature different people. We'll make sure that everyone gets the equal amount of exposure. So when we do that newsletter, um, we'll kind of, again, rotate the position. So maybe like if I do a feature every month of like each resident's kind of series or what they're working on that month, I'll make sure that I'm not always on top. So if there's three of us, every month we'll rotate so everyone gets like the top spot. Um, and the same thing for members and just try and just equality and just make sure that everyone gets a fair chance. Um, yeah, so this channel has turned into a business channel, which is, I guess it's kind of what I intended for. I just don't have, I just don't have enough time right now to do throwing videos and things like that. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm barely making anything. And hopefully later on that's different. And maybe 1280 will definitely have its own YouTube channel, I think. Um, at least 1280 will have some sort of video production because I can do, again, I can do features on our artists. I can do some videos on kind of promoting an exhibition or promoting a kind of a new, a new range or we might do like a theme kind of thing. Um, so there's a lot of room for content and I don't want too much of that behind the scenes stuff to go onto the brand. Obviously here, between you and me, that's fine. But yeah, on the official channels, I think I'll keep it quite polished, quite professional. Yeah, I just want to make it work, basically. And it's me being greedy. I want to do everything. So I want to do my own brand. I want to do my own studio. I want to run a community. I want to create content. And yeah, I'll just give everything a go. If it doesn't work, I'm sure there's ways to work around it or um, change things around. But anyway, so this is, it's now officially December. This year has just gone by. It's actually been a very interesting year. And I've actually been going back into the business updates and just watching what's been going on. And so often I'll have an idea and then the next business update, the ideas change or it's tweaked or it's done differently. Um, so I'm really glad I'm doing these kind of videos. So the next one will actually not be a month away because if I can, so if I can get the keys in two weeks and I'll definitely do a quick walkthrough um, it obviously won't be as polished, but I think it will be a fun little kind of vlog just to show what the space looks like and kind of, you know, same thing, just document the process and everyone can be part of it. So if you're in Melbourne and if you're a maker who are struggling in your home studio, it's just like you're just running out of space, you're getting in the way of everyone, um, do check out 1280.gallery. Um, you can put your name in the, your, your email address in the email list. And as soon as application opens, I'll send out an email. Also on Instagram, which is also 1280, so 1280.gallery. Um, yeah, for any future updates, just go there. Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, for those of you who've been following and commenting, thank you so much. I get a lot of messages from you guys and it's all very encouraging. Um, obviously my dog's not happy about it, but I can't be bothered doing this again, so. I will see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks.